Okay, the next series of slides is looking at descriptive writing. This is really for revision. Um, most people were present when we looked at this. So we're going to look at sensory description. <coughs> when we talk about sensory description, what we're talking about are the five senses. Smell, touch, taste, sight, and sound. They have to be in that order. And often this one is quite hard to do. But if you can do it, it's worth it because it's quite memorable. Same with smell. It's a very powerful sense. <coughs> Most students, when they write, they only fix... They fix themselves on this and they describe what they see, what, they're, what, the, what the writer can see, but they forget all of these other senses that make your writing so much more interesting. Okay, we did this on the day, but for those people who weren't there, weren't there on the day, this is something for you to do yourself, which is a setting activity where you select an outdoor area where you have as little distractions as possible. The way to do it is to start on a, focus on a single item, just concentrate on it. It can be something quite small, like a blade of grass or an ant walking by. Um, and you start using sensory description to describe. Describe everything you can see, hear, feel, taste and smell while you're looking at this minute object. And then, you should describe other items that are surrounding it. It might be the environment, it might be what it's, if it's the ant, what it's walking on. And then once you've done that, you should try to expand your awareness to, enca to encapsulate everything you can, what everything you're experiencing in that situation. And that can expand to as far as um, where you might be sitting and things around you, or you can be expand to the universe. There's no real limit to that. One thing you need to remember is when you're describing, when you write in prose, so you might have started in dot points here, which is okay, but eventually you have to get to prose. And we're writing, we're writing prose, we're not writing poems, so and we're certainly not writing dot points, so you need to get to action. The way to convey action is by using verbs. I said in our first lesson, you might remember them as doing words, but they are words that describe the action of, in this case, the, what we call the subject, so what the sentence is actually about. So what are they doing, or what's being done to them? Right. We actually want to have a description of that. Once you've done that activity, you've written a, you might have written a paragraph, should go back to your own piece and now look have you used sensory description if you haven't add it wherever you wherever you think it fits best generally in the beginning of the piece in the orientation or the introduction is a really good place to start and really add those senses to the piece to make it more descriptive more interesting to read <coughs> Now this is a little bit of an aside. Lots of people write about things that they've seen in movies. And in English, we call that um, derivative. And it's not a compliment on your writing. If something's um, derivative, it's unoriginal. So how do you become original? Well, you write about things you know. One of the problems that many young writers have, is they choose unfamiliar settings. If you've never been to New York, why on earth would you write about New York? It doesn't matter that your story is set in New York. Does it have to be set in New York? Perhaps it can be set in Henley Square. So that problem of unfamiliarity, not knowing about it, comes up and because you have to create something you may not know much about, it's uh, time consuming and generally ineffective. It's also going to be inaccurate. What can be done to overcome this problem? It's two things. If you really intend 
on writing about New York or the Western Front or wherever it might be, you need to go and research and find out a little bit about well, what are those places or what were they like so that you can write accurately at least. Or the more easier thing to do is change your setting to one you're familiar with, you know, one that you don't have to, that you can actually remember rather than actually create.